How's it going everyone? This video is covering the Larson opening. I think a lot of times people like to play d4 and e4 uh, a little too heavily and they study um, this, these openings very very thoroughly um, and they forget that there's other openings that you can choose. So this video is going to uh, bring some light um, onto an opening that I really enjoy and it's very passive looking but it, it actually serves a very important purpose um, not only in the start, but later in the game, uh, you'll see that this opening um, helps you a lot. So let's just reveal it. It's uh, it's actually going ahead and playing b3. And the idea is obviously to fianchetto the uh, dark square bishop um, on a very long diagonal. Very nice. And we're going to be covering in this video two responses that you might see. And, and there's a couple more, sometimes you maybe see this, sometimes this, but with the ideas that you're going to get from these two responses, you can probably figure out what to play um, in any other scenario. So first let's go over the much more common um, e5 uh, response. Against this, you're going to go ahead and take out your bishop. Uh, matter of fact, against both of the responses, you take out your bishop. And now uh, black has two options. Um, realistically they have a couple more options um, but realistically you're either gonna see uh, d6 or bringing out the knight to c6 um, both defending the pawn um, and this video will cover those two variations if you see a move like um, bishop to to uh, to d6 instead or even queen um, over here to e7 uh, also defending the pawn then you can use similar ideas that I'm going to be showing you in this video because realistically all of the openings um, are similar in many ways. So in both, uh, in almost every scenario that you play with this, these two pieces here have a, a fairly hard time uh, coming into the game. When you focus on developing your dark square bishops and your dark square pieces, your, likes, your light square queen uh, and your light square bishop, light square queen mean, meaning it starts at a light square, uh, have a fairly hard time, which is why you're going to go ahead and play uh, e3, now letting your queen out and your bishop out, um, and although you don't necessarily want to push out your queen too early on in the game, eventually you might need that uh, escape path um, or just a nice uh, move uh, with the queen. And also, uh, and probably more importantly, this prepares uh, d4 and f4, and so this could uh, transpose into a more common line uh, where, where you either play, like I said, d4 or f4. Now, your opponent usually will, will take advantage of the fact that you don't really have anything stopping uh, these pair of pawns in the center and will play uh, this move here, uh, which is why usually when your opponent plays this, eventually you're going to have a similar position to this because eventually your opponent uh, will want to play this move. Um, and against this, you're going to go and take out your bishop already, uh, taking advantage of the fact that this pawn is, is not uh, where it starts at e2. And you're going to pin the knight. Now, uh, your opponent is going to most likely take out their bishop. Uh, this is the engine's best move, uh, and it's the most common move as well, according to Lee Chess. So this is a very common and the best move um, that black can respond with. And it just it, it gets you faster to castle. By the way, with this opening, uh, you're going to develop a lot of your queen side pieces, so you're probably going to castle queen side. Um, there, are, there is one variation that you castle king side, and I'll get to that later on in the video, but for the most part, you're going to be opening, uh, or you're going to be opening up these two spots to be able to castle queen side. Now, you're going to go ahead and instead of um, taking out your knight uh, or your other knight, play this move here. And you could take out your knight, but I prefer this move. Uh, because a lot of players don't know uh, how to respond with a bishop being on this uh, spot here, which is why they're going to freak out and they're going to take the pawn. And that's a huge mistake, huge mistake, because you grab the material back, but you also grab a rook. And it's just really, really terrible um, for, for, for your opponent. So because of this, usually uh, you're going to see uh, either pawn uh, protecting this pawn, um, or a very aggressive move, but first I want to tell you a second trap that you might uh, encounter, which is if your opponent moves out this knight to here, you simply go ahead and grab the pawn here. 
and your opponent could move the knight out to be to maybe be able to castle because it seems like your opponent has enough pieces uh, defending this pawn here, but it, but your opponent doesn't because of this very nice very nice pin. So after your opponent uh, captures the the pawn, you can capture back, and well, your opponent can't capture back. So um, and and then you obviously win either the knight or the bishop. So if we go back now, let's talk about the more common moves. So if your opponent plays a move like this, then you can simply take out some other of your, some developing pieces on your queen side, and um, you have ideas of may maybe moving out your queen. You have ideas of, uh, of even just taking out some of your pieces on the king side, and it's a very solid opening for you. Um, yeah, very solid. If your opponent instead goes for a very aggressive move, uh, but it is played a couple of times, which is uh, h4 here, um, you simply play this move here. And a lot of times you don't necessarily want this uh, on the king side because a lot of times you castle king side. But like I said, if you're castling queen side with this opening, then having the structure of pawns on the king side isn't going to, to um, be too, too significantly bad for you. So it's okay uh, to, to, to push these pawns out. Uh, so your queen is probably going to go back, in which case you can develop some more pieces and uh, this is a happy position for you. Now let's move on to the second response that you might see uh, after b3, which is going ahead and playing d5 instead of e5. And you're gonna go and do a similar uh, response with b2, and uh, your opponent probably is gonna take out their bishop. The main idea of taking this pawn out is that you allow this bishop to get um, a, a way out, and this is kind of in the sense uh, similar to a London system, your bishop and pawns are controlling a lot, and you can play very passive moves, um, like Fianchetto, uh, your other bishop, which is my favorite response uh, to this type of movement. Um, so it, And it doesn't harm you. It looks very passive, and maybe it doesn't look very good, but it actually, and, and, and this is the case where you castle kingside, by the way, um, it transposes into more of a, a common opening, um, it, it transposes into the two fianchetto uh, opening, and you have a king very safe, and now is when you start moving out your pawns in the center uh, and, and putting pressure on your opponent. Uh, this is very common line, um, and this is a position that you might reach, and you can see that now you do have these pawns um, that you don't necessarily want where you castle, but once again, now you castle kingside. So it works well in the sense that whenever you have a, a, a fairly um, open pawn structure, you castle the other side. And that's the main idea in the Larson opening, having a very safe king and very uh, powerful diagonals. Usually only uh, dark square uh, bishop on the diagonal, but sometimes uh, the light square bishop might join you as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, make sure you guys go to the comments and tell me your favorite opening. Uh, additionally, if you guys have any traps that I have not covered yet, uh, then leave them in the comments below and I will cover them next video. I'll see you guys next time.